Hello, guys, Hi and guys. welcome to the Que Dicho podcast. Welcome back, you guys. The podcast where we dive deep into the dichos we grew up hearing from our parents and grandparents. I'm your host, Alondra Luviano. And I am your host, Alejandro Luviano. And in today's dicho, we're going to be breaking down No se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez. In this episode, we're going to be diving deep into the dicho. We're going to describe the dicho and what it means. We're going to obviously gonna break it down. translate it as well. And then we're going to dive deep into personal experiences of how this dicho affects us personally and how we can how it's played out in our personal life or an example yeah how how it relates to our lives yeah, yeah. okay that way you can get an idea on how it would relate to your life and you can make this dicho part of your life as well all right let's get into it yes let's get started guys all right so no se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez all right first of all let's break it down into english translation Yes, you can add whistle or eat pinol at the same time. Pinole. Pinole, right? Because I thought you meant pinol like the the cleaning product, <laughs> and I was like, no, you can't. Yeah, yeah you no, cannot. you can't. That's, that's <laughs> and I don't want to. <laughs> that's facts. Yeah, <laughs> right? yeah, yeah. Don't even mess with that. You know, it's like that Tide Challenge type of oh thing. Oh my gosh, yeah, that was ridiculous. Oh gosh, no, 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 no. Don't be, don't be eating pinol. That's not what we're promoting up no. in this hole. I we're mean. <laughs> What? What you say? I said up in this hole. That one just that one just yeah, came out. No, no. <laughs> up right. in here, here in this podcast. Pinole. We had to ask Alondra's grandparents what yeah. that was because not even us knew what that was. No, we didn't, and they knew exactly what we were talking yeah. about. Yeah, and then Alondra's grandpa was talking to me like I was a dummy. I was like, "How can you not know what pinole is?" <laughs> I'm just like, "I'm sorry, I'm not I from know. your rancho." <laughs> Yeah, so let's break it down. What is pinole? What we have asked my grandmother, my grandparents, and Google. It's basically a powder, and it's um, ground up powder from maize. Yes, precise. So it's, maize um, ground up. You know, essentially, what it is is food. You eat this. It's a substance yes. you use because it's easy to transport, and you you could just have your little bag of pinole, and then you would eat it as a snack. And you can make it into drinks. You can use it for baking and for cooking. And it's the, an ingredient. And then the the example or the thing that Alondra's grandmother told us was that she would have the powder and then she would eat it right off like that. Like she would put it in her mouth, eat it like that. But whenever she would give it to her kids, she makes sure to add it on water and some honey so that they can swallow it properly. Because the thing about pinol is well, very powdery, very powdery and dry. And yeah, so it's going to absorb all the saliva that you got in your mouth, which could be dangerous for a child. So that's why she would right. make sure that it's she moist. said se le, se le puede subir mm -hmm. aka it can make you cough it's like the cinnamon challenge that was crazy did you ever yes. do the cinnamon challenge oh gosh did you do it yes you i did. remember doing it i tried to but my mom got mad <laughs> you know my mom she's like no you? don't do that i was in high school i was like Alondra, don't grade. do that don't, she's like, don't no, fall you're gonna start choking and i was like mm, you're probably right because that's literally what happens because it's the same concept canela or cinnamon would dry out your mouth pinol is something similar but i guess it was a mexican version of cinnamon challenge but because in mexico they, well, there's they no do, pinol challenge pinole challenge Alejandro. there is in mexico i saw a couple of videos oh, people there saying is? yeah I, I literally saw this one guy walking in the street and being okay. like hoy presentamos Vamos a ir caminando en la calle y vamos a darle pinol. Vamos a ver si el dicho es real. No se puede chiflar y comer pinol al mismo tiempo. Pinole. Pinole, sorry. <laughs> Hopefully that's the last time I do that. <laughs> it was not the last time he did that. So, so yeah, uh, the this little crew was just walking in Mexico City or Mexico town and just giving people pinole and making them chiflar if they could. And what? How, what no, happened? it's very hard. They would choke? Yeah, so... They would choke? Yeah, yeah. Dang, because it dries okay. out your mouth. So in today's challenge, we're going to try... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have no. pinole, guys. But you know what we can do is a whistle challenge. You know how to whistle, Alejandro? I know how to whistle. I just learned how to whistle in a different way. Oh, no, yeah. You, you learn how to... I learned how to whistle with like... I see. Two hours later. <laughs> There you go. That was after 20 tries, guys. <laughs> they don't have to know that. The point is that I taught myself how to whistle that when I go to the rancho, I could do that. I didn't end up going to the rancho, so I, I never got to do it. So. so that's a method that I avoid because of the tongue touching and finger touching. So the way that I 
whistle if i learn how to whistle just like, like normal people you know we got the regular one okay and then we got the loud one I bet. and then we got the vals one <laughs> all right all right guys, that was our segment back. of talent show with yeah. Alejandro and Londra. thank you guys write down in the bottom comment section who's more talented here yeah. chiflando me or alejandro all right anyways no se puede chiflar y comer pinole all right so mm -hmm. we just gave you guys a really good example of chiflar because we're pros at it you know exactly and there's people who cannot whistle i'm one of those who can barely whistle uh -huh. like it's it's a struggle it's very windy yeah there's people who can't whistle meaning that whistling in on its own is a it's a skill yeah mm -hmm. and it's something that you do that after a lot of times of practice you can start to do it you know on on command Mm -hmm. so when you're trying to whistle can you really do other things besides like kicking a rock or like just looking at the sky because you're focusing on whistling you have to i feel like it let's say that you're trying to whistle and then there's something funny have you tried to do that uh, yes and you have to have this the a, a specific mouth posture to whistle your your face muscles also have to agree that you are yeah. whistling about to whistle yeah y si no no te sale now the dicho is no se puede chiflar y comer pinol al mismo tiempo and we already broke down or explained that pinol is this powder substance that dries out your mouth so now you're piling on two different things like to whistle you have to have a juicy mouth <laughs> a juicy wet <laughs> mouth, what's another? tongue or whatever right so yeah. you can whistle properly reason i don't know oh i also have to wet my lips i don't know if that's just me do you ever have to wet your lips when you whistle maybe i do i have, feel like yeah i have to lick my I lips can't, i can't do it with the dry lip okay maybe not <laughs> <laughs> okay half of so, this podcast is just gonna be us whistling <laughs> evidence shows that you have to have a very wet mouth for that so Yummy. if you have if you're eating pinole you're also doing the action of eating right you have something in your mouth chewing chewing or swallowing like, moving uh -huh. your cheeks around your yeah. tongue is in a different position so you can't really whistle so the thing here the message is if you're gonna whistle whistle if you're gonna eat pinole eat pinole eat pinole don't be but doing whistling you, stuff you can't so the, the the dicho is no se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez correct so you can't do them at the same time both of them use their mouth but you can't mm -hmm. do them at the same time yeah you gotta focus on one thing so what is the message you guys what is the message Alejandro? <laughs> <laughs> so the message that i got was that you must focus your attention on doing one thing at a time y si no y si no no vas a poder hacer que dos cosas a la misma vez no vas hacer ni una ni la otra bien you can try yeah correct yeah yeah you you're not gonna accomplish i honestly believe that multitasking is a lie i don't think people can just multitask okay so the dicho is talking about multitasking yeah it's kind of saying it's kind of advising against the idea of doing something but while doing something else but let's di differentiate multitasking is more than two things that's still more crazy than just doing two things well two things is hard enough add I mean, on a third i'm sure people say like oh i multitask all the time as in like i'm on the phone and i'm driving like yes you can but you're probably not doing it <laughs> as best as you can you're probably not paying attention to both of them as you should be right so it's said that our attention the way that we go through life on when we're paying attention on something we have this main screen that we're using right we're paying attention on our main screen and then we have like kind of like this backup green on the side where like everything else is going on yeah where everything else is kind of going on and what you could do suppose is like you have your main screen and then you have your secondary screen okay. and you can you can whatever other thing oh, you, you can, can choose one which is on the front uh -huh. So then you switch them yeah. and then the other one's secondary screen and now the other thing is here. But there and can only be one main screen. But there's only one main screen. Even though you're keeping up with both, and, segundo, uh -huh. but there's real in reality there's only one. And guess what? What? There is no third screen. There's no such thing? Mm -mm. Says who? Well, what, what you do is the secondary screen, you simply switch it out to some other screen. But there's only two screens that you can be keeping track of. Whatever is third screen is forgotten. You cannot pay attention. Where did you 
read this information? Uh, it's been more than one book that I read this on. One was Eat the Big Frog first. Mm -hmm. The other one is this book called uh, The One Thing. And it makes you focus on one thing at a time, I'm assuming. <laughs> no, I mean, yes, but like they touch on that and they show research on Okay. On, on people attempting to do multiple things and scientifically it's there's data that it's a myth there is no such thing there's only you're doing the one thing that you're focusing on mm -hmm. and then there's a secondary thing that you switch out to the main thing you're focusing on okay. and essentially what multitasking is you're just switching attention from one thing to from the one other. thing to another so it's a lie mm -hmm. it's it doesn't really exist the idea of multitasking it's in such small percentage of the population okay. i mean when's the time that you said that you multitask Success successfully mm. throughout the day i could say that i did several like things it, it has to be but, minor things that you can do successfully mm -hmm. but let's say that on the moment on the now let's say on the time that i was in the freeway i was trying to get out of the the exit mm -hmm. and then yeah change was, the station uh -huh. i was uh-huh let's say let's say i was changing the station and at the same time the car in front of me braked i had to stop doing one thing to focus on like oh i got brake. yeah oh, pay attention a on the perfect example i'm but, gonna okay. call you out Go right ahead. now alejandro go ahead so you your perfect example that you just gave me reminds me of un regaño no ni sé cómo decir un regaño pero algo que te he dicho over and over something that i've been telling you over and over again yeah something i'm just like don't do that it's not gonna, it doesn't help you okay so here's the thing you guys oh shit when we're driving and when by when i say we i mean alejandro's driving <laughs> uh -huh. when we're in the car in the freeway and you're driving and something just so happens like a car uh, another car is acting dumb or whatever and instead of moving out of the way i mean you do move out of the way but you try to you try to honk and i'm and i tell him every time alejandro just focus on moving out of the way and don't even worry about the honk don't even like as if act as if the honk the the horn doesn't even exist because by the time that you move out of the way and you're trying to honk they're gonna hit you already so in my perspective from all the times that i've dodged cars i don't even try to honk because every time that he does he doesn't he doesn't honk <laughs> but he moves out of the way, but he's trying to honk. You're trying to honk because it happens so fast that a car can swerve into your lane or or brake or whatever or just do make a really dumb move in the freeway that you have to react really fast. Yeah. And I tell you all the time, please, please don't even worry about honking at them. But you tell me like, oh, no, they have to know that they messed up. No, you have to call them out. Let me let me let me give my perspective on when I do that. What is it? It's not that necessary to me. I'm like, in my bro, mind. you want to live or you want to die? All right, no, <laughs> but listen. All right. So in the jungle of the freeway, this chaos filled environment, mm -hmm. you got to be watching out for yourself. Right. So the way yes. that I will phrase this or I will explain this, why I do this is that it's been occasions in my experience of driving that when the car is coming at me and i see him for that millisecond right that i guess that, for that millisecond seem, right and i have enough time to kind of move away and at the same time also beep to alert him that you're messing up pay attention and there have been times where like if the car's like this and it starts moving slowly this way or like it starts moving this way and he v if he hears a beep he'll he'll stop what he's doing stop getting close to me and at the same time i kind of move a little bit like this and then he gets a chance to like oh okay there's that someone hasn't there. ever happened <laughs> yes it has that's no. why i do it no because when you're trying to dodge a freaking car when he's re honestly like in the moment there's no time to honk there is no time because you're move you're using both hands to steer your way out of that situation when are you going to use another hand to just like beep beep, beep? like no it doesn't yeah, make like sense to me Beep. but no like first of all you don't drive with two hands you drive with one hand aquí abajo. and that's a whole other thing that i don't want to say anyways moving on yeah moving on yeah uh that's up to debate guys let us know what y'all think in that do you beep at the person when they're messing up or they're coming into or your do lane you literally get out of the way before or do you wait to beep at them i'm not gonna wait to beep i'm gonna move out of my way right yeah and that's acceptable you could do that but you could also beep at them and make them correct their, All their I know action is i'm always on the defense when i'm driving like i trust nobody right maybe beeping is a little bit more offense and defense is like i'll just 
move back or frenar or whatever you do swerve what yeah yeah maybe because beep is more like yo pay attention i'm here and they 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 pay attention and then oh okay they swerve back maybe yeah and that's the only reason why i do it sometimes there is no time for that and i just swerve that's what sometimes but it's per occasion <laughs> I know. <laughs> did, I, did I just say there is no time when it Sometimes. happens? When it really? Who's here prepared? Emphasis, who's honestly prepared? Emphasis on <laughs> guys. Let us know, okay? No, please. This is no. Ed, this is a debate. Nobody's this is just a, there waiting for something to happen. And when it happens, I'll say it's happening. So you gotta get no, out the way or no, die. It's cause, <laughs> it's cause when you're driving, you have to have that in mind. Like I have it in my oh, mind yeah. that oh, that, those happen. things happen. So I need to be alert, and that's why exactly drive is not a spot where you need to be multitasking agreed mm -hmm. agreed no phones guys alejandro no texting. okay i'm gonna be calling out alejandro a lot what? i'm sorry because he's the one driving mainly so i can judge him all the time this is alejandro <laughs> when he's driving hand on the steering wheel a coffee <laughs> oh no no i'm sorry this is a steering wheel his hand is right here like this a coffee and i'm just like okay when is he gonna put the mug down i'm like okay you can put it down you're not drinking and then he gets <laughs> mad at me <laughs> no 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 i get mad about why why no for real why no no no. i don't get a mad i don't get mad out of nothing no <laughs> you get mad i get mad because you scream at me and you tell me either drive <laughs> Or drink your coffee. <laughs> you can't do Put both. Put it down. No. Now. I said you can't do both. And I'm just like, both. oh, shit, okay. Ay, te haces la víctima. You're... <laughs> So la Mira, Mira, you're making me a monster. <laughs> I'm not like that. Do you not scream at me? <laughs> okay, moving on, guys. This is, at, this is a juicy dicho, by the way, because it's making <laughs> no, us okay. talk Co about multitasking. Coming back to... Yeah. yeah, so Alejandro drives with his mug in his hand and a hand on the bottom of the steering wheel. And I tell him, like, hey, please, are you drinking coffee or are you driving? Because this is not how you do things. And he gets... He doesn't get mad. He gets a little upset. And he's like, nothing's going to happen. I'm like, what happens when it does happen? Are you going to put your coffee down? Then you're going to put both hands on the wheel. Then you're going to try to be... By the time that happens, we're already hit by a car. <laughs> well, that's a hypothetical. That's just little stories I say that Alondra built in her head that might happen. And yeah, I'm who, quantifying who, who, that idea too. But like, no, chances are, you can't. I got a handle on it. Alejandro, no se puede chiflar y comer okay. pinole a la misma vez. I'm going to tell them that remind every time. Me, yeah, remind me next time whenever I'm doing that. But no, yeah, no i would say that it's way easier to like not be holding the coffee and be just two hands like that it's easier yeah it is it's smarter because it's safer it, yes and because when something does happen yeah yeah you have more control if you have both hands here so i will agree that whenever se me paso se me olvida que tengo because what it is is just te confias mucho eso yeah. it's comfortable sometimes because because I, I i in a way maybe i break down the idea that like looking down to see where the cup is <laughs> is too dangerous it's it's <laughs> almost the same thing and this here it's a bit safer than to go like bro not going coffee? 85 miles where an hour coffee? exactly so i i think that <laughs> glancing down to see where my coffee is or or kind of going like I'm where's the coffee i'm literally right there next to you you can just ask me bro stop. damn i forgot i have a driver assistance all the time passenger princess mm-hmm you're on duty you should just be like i'm on duty okay so just kick it so in do what i say <laughs> you're just the driver i'm just kidding just kidding, okay guys Alejandro. moving on with the dicho <laughs> no se puede chiflar ni comer pinol al mismo tiempo so alondra yo, or yo, yo. actually did we say the message the message is you can't multitask do, okay so alondra when you think about this dicho what do you think what did it came to mind well i'm <sighs> I just think of the fact that this message just says that you can't do two things at the same time and have them both come out the way that you want. There, It's not negating the, the fact that you can't do two things. You can if you want, but how? what's your outcome going to be? Is it going to be good? Probably not. Not. It's not going to be efficient. Yeah. None of them are going to be well done or efficient timely right. you can't do done. both well that's that's what i think of but either one's gonna be like 90 percent good and the other one's gonna be like 50 percent good but at the end of the day it's they're like not gonna be 100 you didn't get 100 percent on both on either of them mm -hmm. so something to note guys right there yeah so if you're trying to study for two exams at the same time when is that gonna ever work i mean it's working for me yeah <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't know. No, that's why you got a 90 and a 50. Oh, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Oh, man. I don't miss college for that reason. <laughs> Speaking of college, I actually had my first C in college when I met Alejandro. <laughs> exactly. He came can't do, do two things. 
<laughs> Not like that. No puedes noviar <laughs> y agarrar un degree at the same time. Honestly, she, yeah. That's why she chose me. <laughs> I graduated. Yeah, you did. Barely. No, I'm mm-hmm. just kidding. There no, you go. I did graduate, guys. Don't worry. So when you th- when you heard this dicho, what came to your mind? Right. So the way I broke down this dicho, guys, was that on our busy life on the busy motion ocean of motion <laughs> you're saying like that ex- again <laughs> yeah and this busy world right there's so many things we want to do there's so many things we 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 gotta do right mm-hmm. and so we fall under a trap called the multitasking that we talked earlier or we fall under the trap of we want to do multiple things at once mm-hmm. or we we want to do two things at once we got to do many things at once right yeah we fall under that trap right if you're under that trap then you're gonna find that a lot of frustration is coming your way or you're experiencing a lot of frustration and well then the solution is oh okay when you do realize that no se puede chiflar y comer pinol al mismo tiempo so whenever you come to the realization that you have to do just one thing right scenario number two happens you still have many things to do and you're trying to pick one thus making you fall under the paralysis by analysis because you don't know which one to choose which one to focus on so then you're like oh i don't know what to do let me do none so then you do (laughs) none and then you rebound back to trying to do everything at once oh man right so like whenever you have a long list of things to do that you were like ay mejor no hago nada y me pongo a ver netflix yeah i feel like that's happened to people and then you waste your time and then all of a sudden and you, you feel get, bad <laughs> you get amnesia and then you're back to like trying to do everything at once so mm. you're back at square one so that's paralysis of analysis yeah when you have so many things that like you don't know what to do what to focus on you got so many things that you just kind of like do nothing and then you distract yourself you just you kind of shut down that's the less stressful thing for your brain so it's like okay let's do the easiest thing which is shut down and not do anything it's a coping mechanism Uh it's like i got so many things to do uh (laughs) <laughs> oh let's watch netflix and then all the things you had to do is still loading yeah until they load and you're like oh, i gotta do it. and then you go back to like it's doing many thing. things at loop. once multitasking okay. doing things all wrong and then you're mess. you have more mess ups you you have more failures you have all all that stuff when you successfully jump into phase number three it's like you acknowledge that you have to pick one you you come to the real or you pick one and then you start focusing on one but then you fall under the trap that it requires energy motivation and discipline to just be focused on one thing and take it all the way until you finish it Mm. the when when you when you have that and because you have no track record of doing that you can easily fall back into number one easily distracted is that what that means no it was simply you you fail to just focus on one thing and then you start doing multiple things so you back a square one automatically because you don't have the discipline to block everything out and just focus on one thing and take it up until you finish it but when you're like midway oh i gotta do this other thing so you start doing that other thing right automatically taking you to step number or phase number one of you of being that project of that process so yeah so that that's kind of like the the level level three right if you reach level three it's like you gotta be you gotta know that you you gotta focus energy motivation and a lot of discipline Mm -hmm. if you pass to the next level level four is when you successfully completed one task you were able to handle the oh so you have to take it all the way to finish to be on level four so there's four steps to finish a project yeah 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 because that that's like the the loop the cycle Mm -hmm. though that you can fall into but okay okay but if you if if you if you go from step one when you're like many things that you're trying to do at once two was you got so many things and you got to pick one but you do paralysis of analysis and you don't you don't pass to the next stage you fall back Mm -hmm. right but if you do go to stage three then you choose one and then you find that it's very difficult and you need motivation and discipline and all that stuff right Mm -hmm. and if you reach to level four is when you successfully attempt uh completed that one task right okay but what you can fall under is that when you do number four reach number four is you're back at choosing another task oh, okay so but back you can fall one? you can fall under paralysis of analysis or you go back to like trying to do many things at once right because you get a little dose of endorphin so then you are able to you feel good so then you think you can handle the other stuff you know that actually makes sense to me in my in my life whenever i'm doing laundry mm. 
Because when I do laundry, ¿qué hago? Estoy limpiando el baño, estoy queriendo tender la cama, sacar ropa que ya no me pongo, whatever the case, and then I'm doing laundry, and then I'm going to go edit, and then I'm going to go to this, and then what ends up happening is that I only do laundry halfway, or I do it and then no lo guardo. Mm. I don't fold mm -hmm. it. And it stays there until it's time to do laundry again. So it's kind of like, yeah, I guess that's, right, that's right, something yeah, that yeah. So I you, can you start to. So you accomplish several one of them, but the next task is to, ya que se acabo de lavar, it's time, o to, secar, fold. Yeah. It's time to fold and put away right but yeah. that you never get to that task no because and then you start doing other things that makes you forget about that one either way yeah wow i wish there was a tool that could help you do all that stuff why is there a tool is there, such there could thing? be okay so level five is actually reaching that level where you feel successful and you feel good about yourself because when you start practicing that focusing on one thing you're gonna start seeing that although you're focusing on one thing at a time and mm -hmm. taking it all the way to a hundred and then focusing on the next thing and taking it to 100 and taking it to 100 you're gonna start seeing that you're gonna start piling them up and thus i, I can't even fold that one up <laughs> i need some help mm -hmm. and you're gonna start seeing that you're doing them way faster more efficiently than if you would have tried to do them all at once or, right. or do them all and and because you're taking them all to a hundred percent complete mm -hmm. and thus checking them off and then being more productive the result is on being more productive being more able to do your life more efficiently and thus you're much calmer you're much happier you're much in tune with yourself in tune with your life and you're getting shit done you're you're getting you're making things happen this way work smarter not harder definitely that's okay. that's kind of like what i took uh you definitely want to reach level five of the of that task of, of, uh -huh, of that cycle of that cycle of doing things it would be nice to have a graph we'll make one yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll make one so here's the graph guys and what do you want to call it hello what do you want to call this we can cycle? call it the how not to be multitasker and how to be productive right so here's this graph here's a pdf download it for take five bucks it, exactly guys <laughs> take it it's, it's free a, here's a free tool that you could use we just talked about it but here's the free free download in the description we'll have the pdf that i yeah. is gonna do very pretty and very useful but here it is and this is a tool that we give to y'all to use in your own life thank so you alejandro share this to someone who you think will need it or just talk about it with your family your friends and if it helps it helps just have it in your office right. ahí pegadito yeah. en la pared whatever you know a little tool to help you out correct guys so i'm well, happy thanks. to give this to y'all thank you alejandro that was very much appreciated that's what happens when we actually take our time to talk to think I about know. the dicho we're and here then... last week talking about sopa marucha <laughs> <laughs> i know i'm sorry for last episode guys yeah um sorry like i have so many examples in my life about this situation where i am actually laughing at myself right now because i even wrote it in my notes so as i was preparing for this um episode like we said that we actually wrote down we did some research and we have a little bit of a notes as i was doing that right now before this podcast i decided to listen to taylor swift's new album that she re-released from back in the day and guess what <laughs> what happened babe? it was so hard to concentrate oh gosh and i was like i felt so hypocritical trying to write those notes and just like not even be i didn't even finish one page i usually do three or four pages i usually do three or four pages and i didn't even finish one page and i even said it here me right now trying to write this while listening to taylor swift it's hard <laughs> yeah it, and the the note prior was this dicho is a metaphor for the fact that it is challenging and or impossible to do two things at, at once all right and then Hello? i was just looking to taylor swift just trying to like <laughs> make that sentence and it didn't work all right so remember uh, right now where Alondra was roasting me for doing something multitasking i got something i'm gonna chew on with Alondra. is it about you and I, it's about you girl <laughs> okay Hello. so alondra is a graphic designer she works out of her computer all, right, all the time <laughs> so her work process is she has a little tablet where she draws a wacom. a wacom and she draws and does her designing there and she has over here another screen in fact here's her setup <laughs> 
And so Alondra will be on her Wacom working on something. And up here, she'll have... It was YouTubers doing YouTubing YouTubers. stuff. Sometimes it's podcast, but I understand. Recently now, it's been podcast. Only podcast. Right. Yeah. Like, like a year ago, maybe? Uh-huh. Yeah. I would I would tell Alondra. It's like, Alondra, let me be honest with you. Don't get mad, but let me be honest. I feel that whenever you are working on a design and, and listening to your, your YouTubers, I don't think you're giving your 100% to that one design. And what would I say? i would get all defensive yes yeah. i do that's how i work yeah yeah pretty much the defensive trying to protect the ego i said like that's my Aww. that's my work process that's how i work that's how this i flow how I dude it. i did this before you got here this is the way i work this is, is the that way a song? no i don't know i'm just making it oh but yeah <laughs> but you're pretty much this is the way this is, this is how i work and i would be like I'm sorry. And it no, wanna... yeah. It would take me forever to finish a job. Because I, okay. I get it. I've done that too. I come from a designing career too. I designed floor plans and I drew floor plans for architect firms and engineering firms. Mm -hmm. And yes, I remember that. It was easy to just pop in a... A video in the a, background. A video. I would listen to books. But mm -hmm. what started happening throughout the week, I caught myself. The weeks that I would listen to like Harry Potter or like if I was listening to Percy Jackson series, I would you, get on to the story. You get into it? My work efficiency would drop down to like an 80%. Right? Okay because i would take breaks just to like get to the juicy parts right like, okay, or like yeah. kind of like tune in uh-huh right yeah yeah but the times that i didn't listen to anything of that and it was just me and like i just put classical music just you in the zone for mm -hmm. work i'll finish a lot faster wow and como si multitasking doesn't work yeah imagine that guys it's true every fool must learn no yeah there's something to analyze yeah everybody i'm sure everybody has lived or experienced something like that or is experiencing that right now turn the podcast off you guys <laughs> <laughs> we suggest to pause it listen to this podcast on your free time yes listen to this podcast responsibly when you're not multitasking or anything which or, is almost impossible though, i know everybody damn. listens to podcasts when they're doing Wait, something else that's the whole brand of a podcast damn. actually yeah damn, we're gonna we're gonna take all that back guys because we <laughs> don't want to mess with this our own show doesn't mean anything yeah no <laughs> no nah, guys or, or like i said you have your primary window and then you have your secondary window okay yeah so alondra alejandro we can get back to all right let's get back to the saying. dicho Well, that was it. That was just the fact that I was listening to Taylor Swift and I was like, really, girl? <laughs> really? This is how bad it is for me? <laughs> Why do I need to be listening to Taylor Swift for now? This is not the time. <laughs> I'm literally here to prepare for the podcast. And I decided that, you know, what would be a really good thing to do? Put on the Taylor Swift songs, uh -huh. even though I already know the songs. They're the same ones, They're right? The same ones, because she remade her music. Uh -huh. And so I'm just sitting there like, oh. <gasps> And I was like, all right, let me put on a different song. And I like put Taylor Swift, this old song that she played at Hannah Montana's movie. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, that was me and Alejandro. I was like, girl, Wait. get back to work. <laughs> which which one? Crazier. Huh? Uh, no, I don't know. It's a Taylor Swift. little clip here. If you listen to the last week's podcast, that was the song that I think of now. When we met. Oh, it's the one you talked about last time? Which one? Taylor Swift song. You mm -hmm. said if you listened to last week's podcast, that was us. I just said that right now. Except, oh, right now? But you said... You're tripping me the <laughs> hell out right now, bro. You know what? I, I'm so confused. Oh, my God. It feels like I was, like, dead. Uh-huh. Or, oh, my God. Why would you say that to me, Alejandro? I'm tripping balls. What's in this tea? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm well, scared. Well, I just got, like, an out-of-body experience with Alejandro asking me what I had just said right now. <laughs> I'm not kidding. <laughs> Bro. Why would you ever do that? So, why are you crying? Because you just said. <laughs> you're scaring me. <laughs> you, scaring? you just said. You're scaring me. You're scaring me. Stop crying. <laughs> why are you crying? I'm crying now. Hello, the kid he says, please. Uh -huh. It's la canción that I'm referencing to the podcast of last week because I was talking about last week how we met. What's so funny? Stop. So what I <laughs> got confused of is like, bro, I oh, was tripping. Did you talk about that Taylor Swift song last week? <laughs> no, I just said it right now. Okay, okay. And then you throw this at me <laughs> that like I just said that I'm like, 
Yes, you just said this, but like, did you reference that? You didn't answer my question. No, but you're asking was, me what I just referenced. It's like saying, did you mention the Muffin yeah, Man when I, I had just mentioned the Muffin Man? I don't, I don't remember you talking about the Taylor Swift song last episode. Oh no, I, I was talking about us meeting. <clears throat> okay, there's a Taylor Swift song mm-hmm. that makes perfect sense from how we met and how I mentioned oh, okay. it last week. Oh my God, those. <sighs> okay, guys, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're back. We're back. Okay, I was Confucius. So moving on with the dicho. Okay, we're moving on to the next phase, which is we're gonna see where this dicho kind of applies to our live the example that i can think of of no se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez a time in my life that comes up very significantly the time where we were trying to do ale squared and we already mentioned this before uh, here here and there but ale squared mm-hmm. was our old art business art business that we started with Al- me and alejandro it had so many obstacles in our way that obviously it didn't work out so this is one of the many mm-hmm. so at the time covid was already going on and i was working from home and by working from home i was actually taking care of my grandma who needed a caregiver and i was also taking care of my baby nephew who, who was months old at the time mm-hmm. so i was juggling both of their like schedules both of their needs both of their personalities right <laughs> just get this guys she was taking care of someone who was barely beginning the life of the cycle of life where it's a baby also taking care of someone who was um, more in the end stages of life almost a similar stage in life Mm -hmm. believe it or not it's very opposite end on the opposite end of the spectrum whoa it was a lot you guys (laughs) (laughs) i was doing this for two years but i had to stop it because both stages of both the people's lives that I was taking care of was becoming too much to handle because baby was already walking, baby was talking, baby was obviously already in his toddler stages who needed more attention. At the same time, my grandmother, who again, pases cancer, at the time, she was also digressing into her health even more. Which meaning, which meant more Which more meant a attention. lot more attention. And it mm. was really hard because whenever you deal with somebody who's already, I guess, an adult who has her pers- their personality made. It's harder to take care of somebody who's already like an adult because they already have their right. own demands, their own needs. You can't impose something on them. Yeah. So, and right. also because... They're an adult. Yeah. You, and uh, for kind me... Of. I, for me, because she was my grandma, also a sense of respect. That like, oh, okay, like my grandma does not want to be talked to right now. I got to get out of the room. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so it was a lot. So imagine that, doing all of that. And then at the same time, trying to have our art shop going. Uh-huh. And let me tell you, it was it was a juggle. Three little balls at the same time, trying not to drop one, trying not to drop the other. And the only time that I would be able to make art was whenever I had my nephew asleep. For his nap time, I would have him in my arms or like in, in like his crib. Mm-hmm. And usually for nap time, you can leave. You get out of the room and go do stuff. But what I would do, stay in the room with him. And if he, if he woke up or if he needed like just some type of comfort, because his sleep schedule, I already knew it. So if he mm-hmm. woke up anytime earlier, I was there to... To just like shh, 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 shh. <laughs> and he would go back to sleep and i was like okay i can continue working if he woke up and i wasn't there he would kind of like start crying a little mm-hmm. and i would go back and like shush him to sleep so instead i would just stay there and draw on my tablet moral of the story is yeah. that it was a lot at that time obviously no artwork was really made nothing that i could have said that i was proud of because i couldn't really focus all the way i needed to attend to myself as well like oh i need to go eat i need to go right. prepare our meal prep for the gym right yeah and so it was that was your break right whenever we would you yeah. would go to the gym yeah taking care of my nephew was that that wasn't really the hard part taking care of him was like just hanging out with a friend it was so cute it was so fun Mm-hmm. But like with having taken care of my grandmother and then Ale Squared, the dream of Ale Squared. <laughs> right. Guys. Oh, my God. Oh, it was a lot. And at the time, you only kind of saw it on weekends. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was off. So you, you would only hear about it. You didn't really get to see it full on like right. how it was. I would hear the breakdown of the week type of thing. Yeah. Right. Like, oh, my grandma and yelled then, at me today. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, come here. Yeah. Get to the hotel. <laughs> No, I don't, I don't know. I don't want to say those things. Actually. Right, yeah. So when the the reason why that would happen because your grandma was also mentally degrading too, and she wouldn't realize she was being mean to you. Yeah, no, yeah. Or my who grandma, you were type of thing. Right? She would, yeah. She was already digressing to the point that she didn't know who she was. Sometimes where she mm-hmm. was, she would get lost in the house. 
and it was just like a lot of things that were really i mean it was heartbreaking to see that you know she's your grandma you have some like a, a respect for her you have an image of her and then i mean now you're taking care of her and she's almost like a child right it's, and you were on duty to attend to her yeah. and then yeah because i mean i wasn't the only one doing it i had help from my mom but she, obviously she had she was also the one that she had to go to work And for me, they were paying me to be her caregiver, which wasn't a lot. I'm just going to say it was ridiculous how <laughs> yeah. much they were paying me. Right. The the government was paying mm -hmm. for that. It, it was just an impossible thing to do and to be juggling all that things, given the dicho more credit as in like, no se puede. Yeah, you could. I couldn't chiflar focus. y comer pinole. Al mismo tiempo. I didn't have enough time in my day to be like, okay, I'm going to attend to these. I'm going to be a caregiver, but I'm also going to work on our dreams. Mm -hmm. It was really hard. So I had to put that to the side for two years. Yeah. Even though like we still tried, but that's the thing. We, we still, still tried. We still <laughs> kicked the little bucket a little yeah. bit. We were like, okay, okay, there. Poking, uh -huh. yeah. poking and it's like, like, little, like kicking it far enough so we can a ver give nos some da. little steps yeah. forward uh -huh. yeah and we would still try which is was the trial and error that to be honest was the platform in which we are standing today here yeah doing the quedicho podcast we had a lot of time to reflect on those failures i mean like you said like we would try to kick it and be like okay let's see let's try this let's try that but obviously we were not in the stage of our lives to really put yeah. our all in it which is for me that dicho really came up in that time like i think about that part of our life for ale squared beautiful times beautiful moments <laughs> difficult moments But definitely... It was filled with a lot of life lessons. More and more, I am realizing... And this is a point for you, Alo. Okay. Remember when we had the little debate where you would say that it's on the lows that you learned the most? Oh, okay. And my <laughs> argument was... Guys, you let us know which one you agree on the most, but here it is. Alondra. We've had a debate that's been going on for as long as we've been dating. Okay, no joke. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> What I'm saying is that I believe that you learn more from your lows in life. Imagine there's a horizontal line. Mm -hmm. You learn more when you're on your lows than you do on a high. Meaning you learn more of life. You get more life lessons when you go through hard stuff. Alejandro. My point of view at that time, my argument was that in the scale of like neutral, neutral events, low events, high events the experiences you have low are good lessons and good things that you that help you learn in life mm -hmm. but it's equally as the high ones equally as valuable equally as valuable as the high lessons whenever you're riding the high there's lessons that you got to learn here too that are equal to those low ones and for me i always been saying no you learn more when you're going through the hard ones and the way that i picture it is like the value of a high doesn't ever compare to the value of a low like the experience of something so low mm -hmm. a life lesson or overcoming something right it does not feel as good highs and lows don't compare you learn more from the lows than the high moments but you think there's way more lessons to be learned and like you you memorize but and but yours but is you think that it's same equal you right. can learn from the highs just as equal as you can learn from the lows and i'm like hell no right hell no you can't <laughs> there's no way right but what are you trying to say now my dude what i'm trying to say now is that mama what i'm saying now is that the stance is shifting that long long argument that we've had mm -hmm. where in the lows now it's more towards what you're saying really when when you are in your lows there are lessons to be learned things that you can contemplate and study and and learn from and when you're in the highs all you can do is just experience the highs there are some lessons to learn but it's better to just appreciate the high that you're writing it's a, a time that you can reflect from the lows that's why it's so valuable when you're i feel so so yeah so you you can only see the lessons you learned from the lows and when you're in your highs you're experiencing the high and just enjoy it that's, so that's your argument fruit. so now you agree with me yeah because in the highs Bravo! because in the high <laughs> sorry <laughs> you're rude thank you thank okay. you The way that I am explaining this, and it's been it's been a journey to get to this point, is that, yeah, the lows have lessons, have things to teach you, while in the highs, all you can do is just enjoy My question the is, journey. 
what kind of low taught you this what brought you to this conclusion no it, it's just um it's just that i've had a few more lows that i can quantify more and see uh, okay yeah it seems like I've been able to get more things to talk about, things to analyze from lows than highs, because highs, all I got is the results. It's like, there's not much that you can break down from a high. There's not much then, substance. Yeah. Other than just, it's like, it's a good time. And, and I feel like if you linger there, what do you learn? You kind of start feeling like boasting or you kind of feel like you're um, arrogant arrogant uh uh-huh like like what lessons do you have to learn from whenever you're in the high i don't know there's not much all the but but then that's why i fall onto like it's not much that you learn but it's that you experience and you enjoy the moment more than anything i don't even know how we went through that conversation back in the day i don't know i was i was just trying to be fair with the experiences of life that there is an equal there's so equal Mm -hmm. reaction you thought that there were, it was like the, the, the yin zero. Yang. Yeah. Yin the and yin yang. Yang. I was thinking yin yang. I was being more sen. You grow more from the lessons that you get when you're going through a lower part of mm-hmm. life. That's how you know you grew because you were on a low. Yeah. Nos estamos desviando mucho del dicho que estamos hablando en este episodio, guys. No se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez, uh-huh. Alejandro. Yeah. Us trying to talk about one dicho and another at the same Porque, time. Uh-huh. Exactly. <laughs> what were you talking about before we went to this? We're talking about my my experience with this dicho, which mm-hmm. was AL squared, which ended up not working out for us because yeah. we didn't feed it and we didn't water it the way that a small business or a startup business needed to beautiful story thank you for sharing with us alondra thanks for having me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about you alejandro have you experienced this dicho in any way yes definitely definitely it's been something that i have acknowledged i've analyzed one thing about me since i had that awakening that i've talked about where like i got i turned on for my future i turned on for myself and i was like i'm gonna improve and i'm gonna become a better version of myself uh, since that time when I was 18, I f- made it a thing to like read books and start seeing the world, breaking it down, analyzing, writing down in my journal. Because of that, I've understood this concept even back then. Mm-hmm. And it was something that I was tackling. I would see it come on so many times in my life that like, oh man, I got so many things that I'm doing. I need to focus on one thing. I need to, I need to narrow it down. You would stress out a lot, I remember. I would like get frustrated. Mm-hmm. It was, and, 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 and that word actually describes the perfect feeling I would have when so many things were like that. I'll get so frustrated, like... <laughs> because i feel like everything piled onto you so suddenly it like whenever your parents left mm-hmm. everything all of the responsibility came onto you and you had to figure it out because no one was going to do it at all if you didn't do it right apart from everything else that you have to get done for yourself Mm -hmm. a part of my dreams a part of my day job that i had then i had the responsibilities of making sure bills were paid just making sure things were working smoothly in our household yeah at the time during that whole little period it was whenever you were going through your grandma little nephew so then during that time is where like i was also feeling a bit overwhelmed frustrated and just felt like i had a lot of things to do that it took this one time that we went to go work work out whenever we finished workouts yeah we would on, stay in the car and talk we would stay we have up, our meal prep <laughs> eat our meal prep our protein yeah. shake and then we would just like hang out we would just stay in the car and we would talk like catch up it was just one time that i was starting to express like and you know, i was crying um, in my arms and i was like it's okay no. <laughs> <laughs> i was just very frustrated so then i was like desahogándome con ella what we came down to is there's this whole list i got and what do i do with this whole list paralysis by analysis type mm-hmm. of thing you had to, a whole lot of things to do uh-huh. i would distract myself with anime tiktok and conspiracy theories it was do the things that i said that i need to do or just distract myself until tomorrow and then do it all over again the next day <laughs> and never do it that's whenever i would express to alondra that my weeks just started melting together and like mm-hmm. i couldn't tell the weeks apart because they're all the same was, every day they was felt the same. the same eating the same things over and over chicken with rice chicken with beans wait but i would food prep <laughs> no 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 on the, the days, other days on the I other days that I you, didn't. alejandro was like thanks for the food prep alondra i gotta go home and eat <laughs> 
Así se despedía. Bro, yeah, sometimes. <laughs> he, he wouldn't actually say that. He never had said that. I that never was said just it. She, something... didn't, she didn't even know that sometimes I would But he go explained back it now eat. that we're married. He's like, yeah, sometimes I would still go home hungry. <laughs> But I mean, like. <sighs> yeah. Quería just... meal prep. It was the you stress. Know, <laughs> it was the stress. It was probably the stress <laughs> and all that stuff. No, so yeah. after that talk, after we broke all that down, to have all these things, and then you suggested, well, why don't you just focus on one thing? For me, it was like, duh, I've known this, that that's something that you can do and you need to do. Mm -hmm. Focusing on one task at a time. Many books have said it. In fact, I read a book called The One Thing that literally broke it down just like that. What? Right? Would you so, look at that? Right. I was like, oh, yeah, one thing. Is there a tool I can use? Is there something there is out there that I can use? And I didn't find any tools, just like making a list and whatever. And just checking it off. Uh huh. Checking and it twice, gonna find out who's naughty or nice. You know? <laughs> Casey. <laughs> <laughs> I start breaking down this idea that was coming fast, downloading it from Spirit World or whatever, wherever it was, right? Mm -hmm. But I was downloading information and I was like, I'm going to come up with the system. I'm so inspired and I was like, okay, here's what it is. And I presented it to Alondra. It's like, I just came up with this new method and I'm going to call it the Top Card Method. Ooh. Ooh yeah. And then that kind of sparked a whole little section of my life at that time. The idea was that there's this method that I created where I grab a deck of note cards and on each individual note card, I write down a task goal or a thing I have to do. And I write it down in one note card, one task per page. And I would write down like a little list. Like for example, I would get, clean my car. I haven't cleaned my car, clean the shed outside. Clean uh, the what? The shed. Oh, <laughs> clean my room and, and little task. Right. And so I made my list. I had like 13 note cards right Ooh, 13 and the idea was this once you have each item then you organize them on priority or ur of urgency or importance the one that was more important up top so then you have this deck of cards called the top card method deck the idea and the rule was this whatever card was at the top that's the only thing you can focus on on that day on that hour on on whatever if it's a top you focus on it And I called it the top card method. So then I would sit and, and look at my deck and was like, I don't even have to think of what I need to be doing. You already know. Out. I already know. It's the top card. It's whatever it's at top. That's the one I need to be doing. So I would read, clean my room. Okay. There's no question. I don't have to think about it. I so don't have to see doing, all. That's what you're going to be doing this evening. Uh-huh. Or, or day or whatever. This weekend. If I didn't complete it that day, it will still be on next. On the top. On next day, whenever I have the so free time. So not until you finish it. And not until I finish it, I would remove it from the top and place it on an archive deck. So for me, it was dealing with that paralysis of analysis for not taking action. That would get rid of that because you just had that top card. It was at top. And in fact, <laughs> a ver, I still have it here, guys. Woo! This was my deck that I started back then. Finish painting bathroom walls and trim. For example, that's my first task that I gave myself. And he wrote completed just so that. Mm -hmm. Completed. So like whenever you found free time, you would make sure. Yeah. Like, Let me do that. Today. Yeah, I'm doing that. Mm -hmm. There is no question. I can't okay. do anything else. Obviously, there is my 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 routines, right? I had to yeah. do that. I had to go to work. I had to do had my shower, workout. Yeah. Uh -huh, use all that some stuff. soap. Then whenever I had instead of indulging in anime, anime or food, I would just work on this instead. Mm -hmm just use my tarde on this and he Put was being two hours. productive yeah. and the thing is whenever i finished it i remove it and what do you know there's another top mm -hmm. card now because it's always at the top the top card method helped me so much guys to get the ball rolling and then the next one was like organize my room my room was a mess guys <laughs> and jordan peterson says it it's like or many other people also say it, it's like your room is a reflection of what's going on inside mm -hmm. if you have a messy room that means you have a messy mind messy life messy everything so make sure to clean your room and it'll reflect it in your persona in your mind Yeah, i feel like your environment really does affect your mood as well so like if you lived in a cluttered house how are you going to be feeling on the inside exactly well, one of the things that i was realizing is this list that is here mm -hmm. was like up here and it had been probably a year that i I said you know what i need to clean that shed oh right i need to organize the things there and it's been a year till the day that i set that and i haven't gotten to it 
And then because I wrote it down on a note card and that was the thing I needed to do, I got on it and I finally completed something that it was there. But you just weren't putting it on priority. But it was never on priority. Urgency it was just there in the background. And then checking off that thing that has been Ooh. there for a whole year, guys. Oh my God. You don't know the satisfaction of like saying, yeah. oh my God. I just did that thing that I've been putting off for a whole year. Now, and was it that hard? No. That's how ridiculous. Because it right? only took me a weekend to do how all that stuff. How ridiculous is that? You were tormenting yourself for like a year mm -hmm. instead of just doing it and getting it over with and not stressing about it anymore. Yeah. For the dicho, no se, no se puede, puede chiflar, chiflar y comer, comer pinole. pinole al mismo tiempo. It's a dicho that it's warning about that. And if you don't get it together, then your life is just going to start piling, piling, piling. You're going to have all these things you got to do and you're not really doing none of those. And then you choose to just sit back and avoid them. Yeah, you avoid them. So, and eventually it becomes bigger deals mm -hmm. like getting oh, your driver's yeah. license. And you said you were bro <laughs> i love you brother but yes we need to get that driver license the dicho is to focus on comer pinol and then you get it done and then you can whistle you can do that with the top card method made by alejandro Lugiano. yes i, I here's the pdf uh, guys yeah exactly you can you can see this method and also the other thing this is probably like the first one and i wrote down here that the challenge for me was that i was going to document and film the process of me taking care of the top car methods which he did which i did guys until I did. he didn't <laughs> <laughs> exactly but i'm um, proud of all that stuff they're all in my personal youtube account but they're all private right now i'll show some clips here yeah. of me doing them and what that helped what was it self-accountability uh-huh it was that and also the way that i see it now the way that i connected because you can only connect the dot looking backwards but whenever i was doing that thing uh, i couldn't see where it was going mm -hmm. or what it was going to help me with but right. what it did and i can say that now is that it helped me get used to final cut pro because i was just oh exactly oh yeah that was before we started anything we had our greatest comeback part three uh-huh exactly damn we don't want to so, talk about that <laughs> so then i was getting used to filming and i was getting used to editing and i was getting used to because i was just pumping them videos out That's i wasn't so true. even i sucked at editing guys i swear <laughs> but those videos are so cringy or so bad edited because i wasn't concerned on on quality i took on the approach of quantity i mean also because you weren't focused on the user experience yeah at no, all. no you were mostly like this is accountability for me. yeah i'm gonna do this for myself i'm not looking for views even though i was kind of like i was wanting to get one of them popular or one of them very but viral not, así nunca. Así nunca. No, guys, <laughs> Sorry, looking backwards it was just you, the work to get used to you had the right intentions mm -hmm. yeah you just didn't know how to work it you know yeah so that's why right now we're gonna have alejandro twerk on camera for you guys Ready? no <laughs> i'm <laughs> not gonna do that, viral guys. no <laughs> that's not the point the point is to give our audience the tools like so far we're already giving you the first tool that we gave you the five steps and then now i'm giving you something that I developed back in 2021 when i was 26. 25 turned 26 on may yeah during that whole process but i developed that in the past and now i'm here still knowing the process knowing the tool i build and now i'm giving it to y'all to use and this is what he has to. always wanted though that's crazy <laughs> this is we're going full circle right now he always he wouldn't stop talking about it when he made it though that's one thing oh my god alejandro can talk you already know that oh my god but goodness. he i mean obviously like he was so excited so enthusiastic of something that he created and it was helping him and it was working and now that he's able to share it with you guys and hopefully guys. it helps you guys even just to look look at look at it like just look through it you don't have to use it but like yeah. have it in mind yeah it's a tool it's a, it's a tool, it's, again yeah. if whenever i was trying to figure out if there was any tools i didn't find any they were probably there but they were in books and they were hidden but like if you find this video and you got this tool guess what you get a chance to already have this in your arsenal and yeah. life is about having many tools of those having things to help you along the way and if you're struggling in a certain thing and there's this tool that can help you get you going at least this is something that you can use and this, i'm giving this to y'all for free just Thank the only you. thing i ask in return is just give us a like share subscribe and subscribe and guys. 500 dollars <laughs> No. From Alejandro. Andale, pay up. Uh, Otra vez. <laughs> Otra vez. I already spent them all. Oh! Uh, Gaddy. <laughs> Ken. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> Anyways, moving on. So yeah, thank you guys. If you've been keeping up so far, definitely recommend looking at the PDFs because Alejandro really did take his time to create this method and as well as the cycle and the way that I designed it. Also, I, I took some time into making it. So yeah, definitely check it out. We would really appreciate it and comment down below if there's anything you want to say about. Mm -hmm. About the top card method and how you would use it or if you're going to use it or attempt to use it. And I'm obviously talking to the present viewers that are going to watch this episode whenever it's released or if you're just coming back to the old videos. This tool will be here for you guys. Yes. All okay. Right. So we have talked about our personal experiences. We've broken down the dicho. We've translated it into English. And now all that's left is to just go in deeper and see what we're not seeing. Time to go deep into the dicho. <laughs> <laughs> no se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez, al mismo tiempo, at the same time. You cannot whistle and chew pinole at the same time. Mm, you got well, it right. the whole time. Uh -huh. Your grandparents and your parents are probably like, what the hell is going What's on me? in there? All right, anyway, so... <clears throat> so we're diving deep. So, okay, so pinole, if you're eating it, you have the potential of choking on it because it's dry and it'll dry out your mouth. And like, if you're trying to whistle, then you're going to like have to blow it in, right? You're going to have to go like... <gasps> and, then and you're going to choke. Exhale. And it's going to make mm -hmm. you... Cough. Cough, exactly. So that to me resembles as like, if you try to do two things, at once or many things at once you're gonna choke you're gonna choke you're gonna come to that frustration mode you're gonna come down to that paralysis mode and this teacher is old this teacher is my grandpa knew it ah, yeah. that's how old it is <laughs> I'm Even, just kidding, Grandpa. I love you. There's this one song de Antonio Sorry. Aguilar. A ver, cántamela. No me la sé muy. Eh, a ver cómo es va yo te la canción. Es una canción chistosilla, pero he would say it. That means that back then, oh, he they would say knew that. that. He said it in one song. It's this one. And it's only in this particular part. Okay. It's kind of mean saying it to this one muchacha. Why? What is she? What is the context? The context is que she's trying to... Holler for a dollar? She's trying to holler at him, but he, she's hollering, hollering at other guys too. Oh. Y le dice eh, él, básicamente, es like, no se puede chiflar y comer pinole al mismo tiempo. Anyways, pero lo dice en esa canción, and it's an old song. Mm -hmm. So, this dicho, it's rooted in Mexican history yeah. and Mexican so, lore. Uh, it's a very common uh -huh. common thing for yeah. everybody to experience. And it's experience. easy, it rolls out of the tongue, and they can say it just whenever someone's doing, trying to do two things, and they're like paralyzed, and it's like, the advice is, hey, no se puede chiflar y comer comer pinole al mismo tiempo and someone will be like what mm -hmm. what do you mean and then so that opens what up what would be the opposite of, of this dicho si te enfocas en comer pinole y después chiflar puedes llegar lejos <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean yeah it's just like enfócate en una cosa a la vez y verás donde llegas un día a la vez Dios, Dios mío. mío okay I mentioned this one book and it's the one thing mm -hmm. right which the message in this dicho it's a lot of that is in this book mm, and it's okay. called the one thing and it's written by gary keller with jay papasan anyway so this book the one thing literally takes you down into an explanation why there's scientific proof that multitasking is a myth and then it gets you to that whole process to help you uh so it has its own tools just like the top card method that i developed um gary keller developed up its own little method in its own way that i also recommend a lot the way that he breaks it down it's like you have to find out your direction in life right what's that one thing you want to reach and the way that you ask is what's the one thing that if i have it everything would become much easier it talks about this concept called the domino effect and what it is is when you accomplish one task that leads you to the second task and then it leads you to the third mm -hmm. and eventually you're going to be tackling tasks that were way beyond in the example is when you knock one domino it knocks the one in front of it right so mm -hmm. you can just follow that right you can't do multi m multiple things things because there's only one domino that you can knock down and that domino then moves on to the next one so the other thing that is said is that dominoes can knock down bigger dominoes if you set them up if you put a little domino and you put a double its size domino and then 
you put a double its size domino. Eventually, it'll knock down a giant one. Eventually, it can knock down a giant one. And then that's the thing that it was saying. It's like, that's how you it's can... like atomic habits. Correct. So that's the thing about the task. The focusing on one thing is that eventually you'll be tackling bigger dominoes ahead of you. So here's this little sheet sheet that I want to share with you as well called the goal setting to the now. What is one thing I want to do someday? Based on my someday goal, what is one thing I can do in the next five years based on my five-year goal what's the one thing i can do this year based on my one-year goal what is one thing i can do this month based on my monthly goal what is the one thing i can do this week based on my weekly goal what is the one thing i can do today and based on my daily goal what is one thing i can do right now so if you follow this up you eventually find out what's the one thing you can do right now that will help you get to your one thing you can do today that you help you the one thing that you can do this week and so on beautifully said guys three tools in this episode wow wow <laughs> para que vean que we're not just here talking oh. talking we're walking the walking uh, kind of yeah and, and and also this tools is something that we can use ourselves and it can help you out too and this is the point That's about the this intention. podcast we dive deep already yes we did do you have anything to share with us i want to read our teas so my tea says let your energy be used to build not destroy Mine says, without gratitude, there is no prosperity. Prosper año. Feliz Navidad. Prospero año y felicidad. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas from the bottom of my heart. I listened to that song the first Christmas I was here and like... In America? in america coming from mexico and i didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> i did not like that song it's, it was in spanish it was just español inglés and i was just like ah oh, it's not hitting like santa claus le dio un beso a mamá na, I like that na, song. Na, 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 or like pastorcitos a belen Corren no, what I think of is um, La Virgen se está peinando. I love that one. Beben y beben. Y a beber. Los peces en el río por ver a nacer. Eh, 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 eh. Solo, solo. Virgen, Virgen, María. María. Eh, Virgen, Virgen. Anyways, so that was it for today, you guys. Yes, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you've stayed to this point, we thank you so much. We appreciate your views and your likes and your comments and your subscriptions. Uh, this was a pleasure doing this episode. I think was much potent than last episode. Full of substance. She was a thicky one. We apologize for last episode, guys. Yeah, if that you want to go watch again. it, go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> But it's here. Yeah, watch it so you can compare it. This was the Que Dicho podcast. And this was the episode. No se puede chiflar y comer pinole a la misma vez. I am your host, Alejandro Lubiano. And I'm Alondra Lubiano. And you just watched the Que Dicho podcast. Goodbye, guys. Bye, guys. Love you.